Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with some shorter test type problems that could be in the format of multiple choice problems. So here the next one has, on September 12th, V Company sold merchandise in the amount of $3,950 to J Company with credit terms $210 and $30. So 2% of paid in 10 days, otherwise it's due in 30 days. The cost of the item sold is $2,725. V uses the perpetual inventory system. On September 14th, Jay returns some of the merchandise. The selling price of the merchandise is $340. The cost of the merchandise is $240. Okay, Jay pays the invoice on September 18th and takes the appropriate discount. Uh, the journal entry that V makes on September 18th. Okay, so we basically got to get to this last journal entry over here, and I'm going to put over on this side basically what we are tracking at this point is accounts receivable. So we're going to try to see what the accounts receivable is at the end, and then we'll have to make that adjustment in accounts receivable. So I'm going to have our T account for accounts receivable because the ultimate payment will be what is owed less the discount. Then I'm going to go ahead and go through our journal entries, and this might be a bit longer way of doing it, but uh, it'll give us the bigger picture on how you know this is we're going to get to where we want to get. So on September 1st, the uh, V company sold merchandise in the amount of 3950. So if we sold merchandise, what would happen? We would I'll put it up here. We would debit uh, accounts receivable for 3950, and we would credit sales or income or revenue. I'm going to make mine. A negative for the credit column here what also would happen we could put it in a separate journal entry or we can keep it in the same journal entry I'm just gonna keep it up here cost of goods sold would then be affected and that would be for the two seven two five and we would have the fact that the inventory is going down inventory is going down by the two seven two five so these are the two you can think of them as two separate journal entries basically they happen at the same time this is the sales half, this is the fact that the inventory is going down, and the expenses of cost of goods sold are going up. What happens to our T account right here? Well, we can see that accounts receivable is here, and that's going to increase the receivables. And if we sum these up, this is the sum of these, it's going to equal the sum of these. And, of course, the debits are beating the credits at this point. And then we're saying that September 14th, Jay returned some of the merchandise. The selling price is uh, 340. So the merchandise came back, returned it. Basically, we reverse this transactions for the most part with a bit of a, one exception. Basically, so if we reverse this first half of it, we would have to debit sales, but we don't usually debit sales. We debit what we call allowance, for, um, uh, sales returns and allowance. So. That's like a contra sales account account that we put in place just for this type of occasion because we don't like to reduce sales. Everything else is basically going to be an exact reversal, meaning the credit's going to go to accounts receivable because they don't owe it anymore. Then we have to reverse this half, meaning we're going to debit inventory. The inventory came back and the inventory, the amount of the inventory that came back was 240 and we're going to credit cost of goods sold for the 240 and in terms of our accounts receivable then we have a reduction here of this 240 in terms of our T account so of course the debits are still beating the credits and now by that uh, 3610 so if I take that 3610 and we're gonna take that and multiply it times the discount rate if it was paid within the discount rate, we're going to say the discount is 0.02. That means that I'm going to put decimals on that. Home tab, numbers, add decimals. I'm going to go ahead and underline this. Multiply that out. We're going to say this equals the 3610 that is owed after the return times the discount. It means that we have a discount of 72. I'm going to add some decimals. 20. 72.20. So our journal entry then is going to be something like this. We are going to say once cash is received, we're going to get cash and it would have been for the 3610, but we got a 72 discount. And there's a couple different ways. I mean, I could put this number minus this number. It's also the fact that if uh, they owed us 3610 and we've got a 2% discount, then we were paid 98%, right? So I could say times 0.98, 
and I'd get the same thing as if we, if we took the 3610 minus the 7220. I'm going to add some decimals, home tab, numbers, adding decimals because they want some, some change on this one. So we got the cash and then accounts receivable, I'll put this on the bottom, accounts receivable is going to go down, but it needs to go down by the entire amount here. So it needs to go down by the uh, 3610, the entire amount that is in there. And then the difference, which we can calculate as, of course, you know, the debits minus the credits, or it's also just this amount we have here. If we add those two up, the debits then equal the credits, and that amount needs to go into sales discount. So sales discount will be that item, sales discount up here. So this is the final journal entry that we got to get to. We need to basically go through the story to get there so that we can see what was... <laughs> Uh, in accounts receivable before this transaction. Next one, a company purchased 11.7 of merchandise on June 15 with terms 2.10 in 45. So 2% discount if paid within 10 days, otherwise it's paid within 45 days. And FOB shipping point. The freight charge was 1,350 and was prepaid by the seller. On June 20th, it returned 2,160 of that merchandise on June 24th, it paid the balance owed for the merchandise taking any discount it is entitled to. The cash paid on June 24th equals what? Okay, so I'm gonna go through the story again here. We're basically tracking accounts payable this time. So I'm gonna break out the T account for accounts payable over here and just kind of make that up so that we can see that item. And so there that is. All right, so now let's go through the story here, and I'll just do the journal entries. We could probably do this a bit quicker than this, but this will tell us the whole story if we do it this way. So our company purchased 117 of merchandise on June 15th. So we got merchandise. I'm going to call it inventory, inventory for short, and we got 117 debiting inventory, increasing inventory, and what will the credit be? Accounts payable. We didn't pay cash for it. It's going to be accounts payable. All right, the freight charges, uh, and then if we track that in our accounts payable, then we're gonna be over here, that's gonna be the credit into accounts payable. And then we're going to say that there was freight charges. Now this is the trick of this problem. This problem's a bit tricky because of these freight charges. They were paid, but and we've gotta pay back for them, but they're not gonna be included in the discount. So what's, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an increase to the inventory because it's going to be part of the purchase price 1350 that's the debit the credit's going to go to the payable because it's going to show up on our invoice so it's still going to go to the payable it's going to increase the payable but we're not going to have to we're not going to get any reduction we're not going to get a two percent reduction in other words on the amount that is freight so i'm going to highlight that just to remember that and that's kind of the trick to this problem here that'll be a bit frustrating to look at and then we're gonna say on June 24th it paid the balance oh okay and then on June 20th it returned some of the merchandise so we returned merchandise so that means the inventory is gonna go down I'll put that in first inventory is going down because we gave it back for uh, June 20th 2160 and then the debits gonna go not to cash because we still have the AP owed so the balance owed then is going to be debited so if we look at our accounts payable now we would say okay the accounts payable summing the debits summing the credits the credits will then win and that's going to be the case all the time with accounts payable of course by the 10,890 that's what we would owe if we didn't have to account for this fact that we got this discount and we but we got this discount now so we need to account for the discount so the di now this is where it's a bit tricky because we can't, we can't take the 10 890 owed times the discount because we're not going to get a discount on the freight here so basically we have to take the discount before the freight so the amount due is equivalent to the 117 plus uh, the amount that was returned or I could say flipping the sign this uh, minus this so if we subtract those two out 117 minus uh, the 2160 that's how much is owed that's not part of the freight and that part we're gonna get a discount on we're gonna get a 2% discount which we could calculate as 0.02 
And then I'm gonna to go to the Home tab, Font, Increase the Decimals, 0.02, multiply that out. This equals this amount, not including the, the freight, times the 0.02. I'm gonna go ahead and underline this, Home tab, uh, Numbers Increase, oh, that's not what I did, uh, underline. So, let's do that one more time. This equals the 954 times 2%. That's the amount of the discount. Therefore, if that's the discount, the amount that we will pay is this minus this. So we're gonna say the amount that will be paid is the amount that is owed, not including the freight, minus the discount here. And that'll give us the amount that we have to pay. And then we have to add to that the fact that we have this freight here. So we've got the 13050 that we have to tack on for the freight. I'm sorry, the freight is up here in green. That's why I made it green, 1350. And that means the amount that we are going to pay at the end of the day will be the 9349 plus the 1350, and that's gonna be the 10699. Now that's what they're looking for here, but if we wanted to see the journal entry, we might wanna just record that journal entry as well. So we know that cash would be credited. Cash would go down. I'm gonna put that over here, a credit of 10699 uh, 10, is cash. Then we're going to debit the accounts payable. But remember, we're going to have to debit the accounts payable for the amount that is in here, which is the 10,890. So we have to, because we're not going to pay the difference because we got a discount, we're not going to pay it back. So we got the 10,890. We're going to need more credit. So this number minus this number is a difference, 191, which is, of course is the discount we got. I'm going to do that with a negative sum formula. So all I'm doing is saying this minus this is gonna be the plug so that this plus this equals the debits equal the credits here. Now you might be thinking we should put that to some account with discount in the name. But notice that this one is not gonna be a discount because what happened is we overcharged our inventory. We put our inventory on the books for the amount before the discount, the 11.7 plus the, the freight and it should be the amount after the discount. So we need to reduce it for the discount that we got because we overstated our inventory. And that's why we're gonna credit uh, the inventory in this case. Next one says that a company purchased 3950 worth of merchandise uh, transportation costs, or <laughs> merchandise, transportation costs were an additional 350. The company later returned 270 worth of merchandise and paid the invoice within the 1% cash discount period. The total amount paid uh, for the merchandise is what? So in this case, once again, we're gonna be tracking the AP. So I'm just gonna make a T account for accounts payable over here and track that as we go. So I'm gonna put an underline here and we'll put a line there completing the T. Okay, so the company purchased uh, 3950 of inventory. So we're gonna say inventory then is gonna go up, up on, and I'm gonna try to put all the Invo all the um, journal entries in here, and we paid for it not with cash, but with accounts payable. That, of course, would increase our T account. The payable is going up like so. So we're gonna owe that at the end of the day. The company later, uh, I'm sorry, and then transaction costs were an additional 350. Transportation costs were additional 350. So that's gonna be included in this item here. So we're gonna say that the transportation costs are gonna be part of inventory and that's gonna be for the 350. And, and again, I'm gonna basically say that we're gonna pay that to the vendor. That's what this problem is assuming. So it's gonna be on the invoice, meaning it's part of the payable, but we're not gonna get the discount on that amount. So we gotta basically be careful of that when we calculate our discount. It's not gonna include that amount. And then uh, the company returned 270 worth of merchandise. So we returned it. So that means the inventory is gonna go down so I usually think about that first, 270, we're getting, that's going down because we're getting rid of it. We're gonna debit something, and that debit's not gonna be cash in this case, it's gonna be accounts payable. So accounts payable, and our T account now is the 270. And so if we sum up our payable here, we've got the 270 debit, and we have the credits of uh, 4300, meaning we have a balance of 4030. Now we're assuming that uh, we are going to pay within the discount period. 
And so you would think we would take that balance due, 4030 times 1%. But note that, uh, w once again, it's not uh, going to get a discount on this 350. We're not getting a discount on the 350. So what, what we'll have to calculate then is we're going to take this, let's put it over here. We're going to take the uh, 3950, this number, and we're going to subtract from that the 270, 270. And that's the difference. This, it's in essence this minus this, which is a credit of the 3680. So that's the portion that's not including the 350. Or you could take, you could do it this way. We could take the balance due 4030, and we're not wanting to include this 350. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that times the discount 0.01. And if I put my cursor there, home tab, increase. And I'm going to go ahead and underline that. And if we multiply that out, it's the 3680 times the 1%, giving us 37. So 37. And that means that we're actually going to pay then this 3680 minus the 37 there. And that's how much we would pay before the freight. So that's how much we would pay not including the freight. And remember that, that what they're going to do is they're going to tack on the shipping costs and they're going to say, we're not giving you a discount on the shipping costs. So remember that was this 350 that we took out. So if we add to this the 350, I'm going to go ahead and underline home tab font underline. We're going to take the 3643 plus the 350. That's what we would actually end up having to pay at the end of the day you may have to add some decimals to that if depending on whether they want those or not now I'm gonna move this over here one more time and they didn't ask for this that's what they asked for but if they did ask for the journal entry we can put the journal entry in place and that's the amount of cash that we're going to pay so we can put that on the bottom cash is gonna go out for uh, I'll put that here this amount I'm gonna make it a credit with a negative this amount the amount that's gonna go out accounts payable it's going to be the other side of it but the accounts payable remember is going to have to be the debit of the entire amount that's in there which in this case is 4030 and so the difference then meaning the debits minus the credits we need a credit here so this number minus this number if i highlight them both 37 this 37 here i'm going to do it with a negative sum which is basically going to say this number minus this number and flip the sign that's the plug that's that 37 we may need to add decimals so we can add decimals if we want to and we put the pennies in there and again you might be thinking that should be some kind of di uh, discount account but what happened is we overstated inventory again we overstated the inventory by the fact that we didn't account for the one percent discount now we need to account for it reducing the inventory by the amount of discount that we are now getting that's why we're reducing inventory with a credit of that 36.8.